Hi, I'm Jennifer Shen, and I'm a product manager on the Google Meet team in Workspace. I'm joined today by Hober Matisse, who is the new Google Services Manager from PwC, a professional services organization with over 280,000 employees worldwide. In today's session, we will discuss what Google Workspace is doing to help organizations plan for their return to office and transition to a sustainable hybrid work setup. I'll give an overview of what Workspace has learned over the past year, our top areas of investment based on these insights, and some of our recommended best practices for hybrid work. Finally, we'll close out the session with a conversation with Holger, discussing how PwC has navigated the last year and how it's thinking about the future of work. During the global pandemic and this year-long experiment in remote work, millions of organizations were forced to put their collaboration and productivity tools to the test across living rooms and time zones. While some organizations were able to successfully test new solutions or adapt existing ones, many struggled as they discovered that their tools weren't scalable, secure, or intuitive to use. On a personal level, across a variety of industries, employees reported spikes in burnout, eroding work-life balance, feelings of disconnection, and frustration with being able to find the latest information. Workspace has been investing in helping people collaborate securely and productively in the cloud for over 15 years. This past year, tools like Meet, Gmail, Chat, Drive, and the editors helped people stay connected and productive even with the shift to fully remote work. Our customers found the transition to remote much smoother because of our tools. And through this journey, we've seen three main themes emerge. First, work is no longer a place. Studies show that a large portion of the workforce will continue to stay remote, and people need flexible solutions that support them working from anywhere. Second, time is more precious than ever, with the average working day increasing by more than 48 minutes during the pandemic. We need tools that help us manage our time and attention so that we can focus on the most high impact work. And finally, human connection is crucial. We need solutions that help bridge the gap between physical and virtual contexts to make collaboration more human and inclusive. As we look forward and prepare to return to office and reimagine what work will look like in the post-pandemic future, these insights form the foundation of three areas of product investment for Workspace. First, Productivity, with an easy real-time collaboration and co-creation while protecting time and attention for individual work. Equity, with a special focus on collaboration equity or the ability to contribute equally regardless of location, role, experience, language, or device. And finally, well-being, focused on our ability to strengthen social connection, team culture, and work-life separation. Now, coming from the Meet team, productive and inclusive meetings are a particular passion of mine. You may have remembered a time pre-pandemic when you were the only person joining a call virtually and having an experience like the one pictured here. Imagine the poor remote attendee seeing a small video, in the video of the video room attendees, unable to track the multiple side conversations happening in person and unable to get a word in edgewise. In all remote, we've been able to achieve a sense of equity as every meeting participant is represented by an equal sized video tile in the meeting. Digital tools like hand raise, polls, and Q&A enable every participant to speak up and contribute in a meeting. As some people start returning to the office and adopt a hybrid work model, which includes a mix of both at home and in office environments, there's a fear that the current equity we have will be lost. To navigate hybrid successfully and make sure we don't revert to our pre-pandemic behaviors, Organizations need flexible solutions that help people connect and collaborate from any location on any device. And that's where our workspace solutions come in and can help. Many organizations are choosing to adopt flexible working options, allowing employees to choose between full in-person, full remote, or hybrid, where employees are in the office a few days and remote a few days of the week. Our new calendar working location feature makes it easier for workspace users to indicate where they're working from on a particular day. In future releases, we'll also be using this information to set smart defaults on our new RSVP join method, where you can indicate how you're joining the meeting, whether in the meeting room or in person. 
As I've slowly been going back to the office in Google, these features were really useful in helping me coordinate a few in-person meetings and lunches with my teammates, who were also on campus when I was. Another feature that's critical to the in-office hybrid experience is Meet's new companion mode. Companion mode will enable you to join the meeting from a second device to have a more individual tailored experience, even in a shared meeting room setting. For instance, you can turn on captions or translated captions in your preferred language or respond to polls and chat messages without having to deal with audio feedback or eating up network bandwidth. Companion mode is rolling out to customers soon and will continue to evolve over the next several months. On the Google Meet Harbor front, we have some great new developments. We just introduced two new Series 1 all-in-one products, the Desk 27 and Board 65, which combine video conferencing and whiteboarding. Desk 27 is for desktops, both personal and small shared spaces like phone booths or hot desking. Board 65 is for small to medium-sized team rooms. It can be wall-mounted, or you can add an optional, seat, optional stand for mobility and it can turn any room or space into a video collaboration hub. These two new products and the existing room kits come together to create a comprehensive Series 1 portfolio that offers Workspace customers a video conferencing solution for any room or space. Some key Series 1 features that support hybrid work include occupancy detection, so admins can be aware of how many people are using each, each space, and adjust resourcing accordingly if there are social distancing issues. Hands-free hands voice commands, so you can limit touching shared surfaces. AV carts for room kits, which give you the ultimate flexibility to build out video conference rooms and spaces in just minutes. Enhanced in-room experience, meaning you'll have the same experience in the um, room as the people on the remote end and be able to see and use hand-raised polls and Q&A. And finally, you can expand your calling circle with, your, with our recently announced embedded interop with Cisco WebEx devices. Now, meetings are great when you need high bandwidth synchronous time together. But we know, just as importantly, people need dedicated shared spaces to collaborate in more distributed asynchronous ways. We recently announced Spaces, an evolution of the Rooms experience in Google Chat. This is a dedicated space for organizing people, topics, and projects in Google Workspace to help teams and individuals stay on top of everything that's important. Coming later this year, we're also adding powerful new features like discoverable spaces, where uh, organizations um, can decide whether or not to let others in their, uh, so members in the organization discover um, any of those spaces and content so that they can join in on the conversation. Enhanced search will also let users easily search for information across spaces and within their own spaces and discover new spaces to join. And finally, inline topic threading allows users to reply to any message within a space, allowing for even deeper discussion and collaboration among team members. These updates will help teams adapt to a more sustainable hybrid setup, help find opportunities for in-person collaboration when necessary, and promote collaboration equity when you're not all in person. But we know that not all meetings and collaboration are equal, and so these goals are not one size fit all. That's why we've also taken the top five most common meeting types, relationship building, working sessions, high stakes reviews, brainstorms, and all hands, and created a set of recommended best practices to highlight the specific features, hardware, and physical space configuration best designed to support each of these use cases to ensure continued collaboration equity in hybrid. Today, I'm gonna to quickly talk through our recommended blueprint for two common meeting types, working sessions and all hands. But you can find more information plus the complete blueprint for all five meeting types at g.co slash navigating hybrid work. Okay. Let's start with a working session, which could be as small as two people or as many as 10. We see this as a small group collaboration, often creating, discussing, or editing a document together. Working sessions could include multiple individuals or groups of people dialing remotely and people participating in the conference room. Our recommendation is that in-room participants would join the meeting directly from a series one video conferencing device like the room kit or the new board 65. They could also launch companion mode on their laptop so they can actively participate. 
Remote participants, either from home or in another office, could join via Google Meet on their laptop or on their Series 1 Desk 27. And they can all let the organizer know how they're going to be joining in the calendar invitation RSVP. Now, onto software and the working part of the meeting. As the meeting organizer, I would share the working doc tab in the meeting so everyone can follow along. But all participants, remote or in the room, can work on the document together in real time with the full power of Google Docs and Smart Canvas. I can also use the upcoming Meet sidebar to see meeting participants while editing the doc, or I can split screen the meeting and the doc. I can also unpin presented content during the discussion to see even more participants. The second meeting type I'll talk about are all hands. These are meetings designed to bring together large teams to share information and create alignment anywhere between 10 to 250 participants. In-room experience is similar to the working session, but you'll want to use the large series one room kit with dual large displays and dual audio bars for the optimal video and audio experience. Remote participants can join using their laptop, tablet, Desk 27 personal device, or even their mobile phone if they wanted to join this call and get a few steps in for the day. For software features, as the organizer, I can enable meeting recording and transcription. I can also set up the event as a live stream and calendar. In the meeting, I can start and share polls in real time, moderate hand raises in Q&A from my laptop or meeting room hardware, and I can review the attendance report results for the polls and Q&A artifacts after the meeting and share their presentation and recording with attendees. As an in-room meeting participant using my laptop, I can open the companion mode experience to participate in activities. As a remote attendee, I can participate in these activities through Meet as I normally do, but I also have access to background blur and replace. And for both in-room and remote attendees, noise cancellation optimizes my audio experience. There are additional Meet features available to facilitate meetings of all sizes and complexities. So I hope you'll spend some time with the hybrid handbook to learn more. And now, switching gears, I'm pleased to introduce Holger Matip. Holger is the new Google Services Manager at PwC, and he is focused on how new features will impact people within PwC once they are deployed. Thank you for joining me today, Holger. Thanks, Jen. It looks like your team is continuing to respond to our feature requests. It's uh, very impressive. And um, I guess we'll have certainly another busy year in the new services department. I'm so glad that you found our updates helpful. I'd love to ask you a few questions about how PwC is thinking about the future of work based on some of the learnings from last year. First of all, workplace well-being is a very important topic these days. What does the well-being mean at PwC? And what does that have to do with technology? So PwC is committed to a culture of workplace wellness. Well-being at PwC means different things to our people. And one key aspect of enabling workplace wellness is flexibility. PwC is focused on enabling well-being and flexibility through technology. This has allowed us to continue to collaborate and bring our people together and serve our clients. And tools like Meet with Video Enabled have materially improved the quality of those interactions to the point that we, are, that we now take them for granted. It would have been a horrible experience if we had to rely on telephones and speaker phones during this pandemic to stay connected. We have many well-being initiatives that are built around Meet, such as 15-minute one-on-one chats, where participants are paired with another person elsewhere in our global network, and small fireside chats with global leaders, for example. I love that. Virtual coffee networking. You know, one of the things we often talk about is technology parity. And from the product side, we're certainly working on features that give people the tools so that they can participate more equitably. What is PwC doing to encourage usage and are employees actually embracing these features? Yes, PwC has long encouraged good meeting habits. So for example, an audience would submit questions before the meeting. So curated answers would be provided to the most popular questions during the session. We also provided dedicated in-office phone rooms, both for call confidentiality and to improve the general quality of the interaction. And with the Q&A polling and breakout room features that have been added to Meet over the last year, we are now able to provide in-person and remote attendees a similar experience. And we see more colleagues simultaneously than before. So we're delighted to see those features being supported in Google Meet. 
And I guess if you ask me about the most used features, those would be hand raising and polling. They've been they've made it so much easier to organize big meetings and to give everybody voice. That's awesome. I know you speak with the users at your organization on a regular basis. What feedback have you received on how they're doing from a well-being perspective? And what are they struggling with? No doubt, I guess virtual meetings and especially meeting overload. That has surpassed email overloads as the number one complaint for many. At the moment, we provide more guidance on dealing with virtual meetings than any other medium. And from a tool's perspective, being able to blur or to replace backgrounds, to enable noise cancelling and to conduct high quality and reliable virtual meetings just using home internet service, that has helped a lot. That has um, helped people to reduce anxiety associated with virtual meetings and with conducting business from home. And the good news for most is that people are learning to manage their time differently, to block time in their calendars for deep work and to attend to family and other personal matters. That's great. How do you think work will change for PwC as you look out a year from now? Will hybrid work just simply be work? I think so. The pandemic has proven one thing at last, that by using these collaboration tools, our people have continued to deliver quality work to our clients, regardless of where we are physically located. And trends that were just developing pre-pandemic are now well entrenched. The way we work is much more flexible now, and our meeting culture has been completely transformed, honestly really for the better. Awesome. Thank you for sharing those valuable insights, Holger, and joining me today. And that brings our session to a close. I hope you found the session informative and I encourage you to continue your learning at Next and Beyond. Here are a few other great workspace sessions to deepen your understanding of how workspace is enabling hybrid work and new patterns of collaboration. You can explore our workspace website and learning center to learn more about specific products and how you can ready your team and organization to adopt workplace. And lastly, you can stay on top of all of the great workspace news on Google Cloud blog, as well as the workspace updates blog. Thank you.